Man, I'm just out here surviving. And what I'm doing right now won't even matter. Oh, baby, baby, it will always matter. You said you fixed that. Get a room. I got a room, mother. Hey, Cash, how much longer I got to wait for my money? God made this land for all of us. Greedy people like you want to hog it to yourself and your family. And Me and my family? Yeah. Cash is I'm your fucking uncle. I just really need a job. 40 on two. This is telemarketing. Stick to the script. Hey, hello. Uh, Mr. Davison, cash is green here. Sorry to bust. Let me give you a tip. You want to make some money here? Use your white voice. My white voice? I'm never talking about Will Smith's wife. Like this young blood. Hey, Mr. Kramer. This is Langston from Regal for you. I got promoted. I'm a power caller. What do they sell? They're not selling it, but we sell it. No, well, there's no amount of money that'll make me do that. Here's the starting salary. Well, man, I'm gonna have to get me some new suits. Cash, I'm gonna make you a proposal. I can see that you want to say no, but I wouldn't do that before you see what I'm offering. Cash, you are awesome. Oh, yeah. All right. up and say, hold my dick world while I piss on your expectations. Hiya, fellows. This is Rudy Land, joined by Ezekiel S. Esther, connoisseur of black exploitation cinema, and Motown funded The Green Dragon, which I've never heard of. The uh, Last never... Dragon. The Last Dragon, pardon me. Go through the jade door and find the Today, we find ourselves in a world of intrepid explorers. Not to be bothered. The name of this film. Sorry to bother you. Sorry to bother you. I was lost there. Thank you, my compadre, Elijah Hughes, for whatever I said earlier. I, it was kind of interesting, but I was honestly bored throughout most of it. Oh, wow. um, it had a few kind of funny lines, but. It's not like I didn't know, I didn't get it, I didn't know what they were going for, but it's just, it felt kind of like hipster trash to me. Oof, wow, strong words. Uh, I, I didn't feel that way. I really enjoyed most of this movie. Uh, it goes into uh, a direction we'll talk in the spoiler section, yeah. which uh, slaps you right in the face and wakes you the fuck up. <laughs> it was uh, pretty bizarre. You said it was a weird movie. I didn't really... Oh, yeah, yeah. I it wasn't that weird to me, honestly. It just, you know, had some kooky stuff. <laughs> yeah, the third act was very bizarre, obviously. All right, well, um, the the first thing I would say is that this movie is gorgeously shot. Uh, it is, like, beautifully shot. I really love the cinematography in this movie. and uh, I only yeah. really took note at the beginning. Wow, in the, really? um, the colors? In the office. Yeah, the colors were really good. It's yeah. incredible. Just the set design, the costume design, it's all really beautiful, well done. Um, uh, and I really like the soundtrack, too. It's, it's when I want to listen to the soundtrack to the movie. I thought it was pretty good. I uh, oh, wow. hated the soundtrack. Oh, boy. Again. This is the hips, first fight we're going to have, huh? <laughs> I just thought the soundtrack was just, you know, hipster trash. We're going to have hipster somebody trash. yodeling be over EDM for a minute. I'm not a fan of experimental music in any way, huh? Well, I can dig experimentation, but, like, I gotta know what you're going for. Maybe you gotta if... know what you're going for when you go into experimental music. Yeah, what are you trying the opposite. to... I mean... Yeah, but overall, you have some sort... It's with anything. You have some sort of a, a thought or an idea behind it. It's not just... Let's just press these buttons, see what them do. Oh, that noise was funny. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you're but anyways, right, let's get uh, back yeah, into the movie yeah. here. Give me, uh, what would you say this movie is about? Uh, well, the main plot is basically there's a guy who's kind of down and out. He's living in his uncle's uh, garage. Uh, he has no money, basically. He's broke as shit. 
and he's trying to get a job and he gets a job at a telemarketing company and that's that's the jumping off point <laughs> obvious <laughs> evidently <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and um, ju- ju- if, you've, if you've seen the trailers for the movie, uh, one of the main things is that he has this Danny Glover, who's in the movie, tells him to do his white voice because, you know, they got to make commission, you know, they got to make money. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of the jumping off point is that he's he wants to become a really good salesman. The plot was really boring to me, that part. Um well, I mean, I would say if, if you like original films, this is probably the most original movie you're going to see all over a year yeah. for me. I mean, it's, uh, I was like, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a crazy fucking story. It's, it's, you, you have, I haven't seen any fucking movie like this before. I mean, I did get some shades of like, they live with kind of like the posters and, uh, the hyper elite versus everybody yeah. else, the working class. Yeah, because there's this. Um, they obviously bring up slavery, yeah. and how uh, the, do you, do you remember the chain of people who sign a contract yeah. for their life and they live <laughs> essentially. There's this. Let's call it Walmart, Amazon type right. company where not only do you work for them, but you live there and they give you all your food, all your clothes. Three meals a day, you're on a cot. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you're just fucking, uh, you've signed a contract for life with them. Yeah, so it basically (laughs) is slavery. It's basically slavery. Do you think they're trying to draw Three hots and a cot. Do you think they're trying to draw any real world, you know, sort of parallels with this? Um... Yeah, for sure. Maybe a little bit. But to me, it never really beated you over the head with it. It's an actual, like when I think about movies that are, uh, you know, like Night of the Living Dead or like you say, would they live where they where they have it in there? The social, the so the uh, social commentary. Yeah. The social commentary and the message. Um, but whereas like the purge, the first purge, which we saw where it's just like, you pussy grab motherfucker, <laughs> you know, Ooh, that's some kind of Russia shit. This movie's not that stupid to, to yeah, do that. No way. No, 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 no. I'm not. This is. It had a lot of interest, interesting things going for it. Oh, yeah. I I mean, there is a lull that I did really hit uh, after. It's it's during the third act for, for me because it's like it's tough to tell how long, like what points with the movie. But the third act happens and you think it's kind of ending and then it, it keeps going. It just keeps yeah. going. And it, and it hit a real lull for me there. Um, and then it ended again, and then it kept going. Yeah, it's got false endings. It's it's trying to make put you off kilter. And, uh, you know, I did really like a lot of, about this movie. It yeah. did work for what me What did you like, ways. aside from cinematography and, and a uh, unique story? And the set design and set the costume design. Costumes. I do really like quite a few of the actors. The lead in this, uh, I, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but Lakeith Stainfield. I saw him in Death Note. Which was on Netflix, and I liked him in that. And he's on Atlanta, the Donald Glover show. Yeah, uh, I think he's a good actor. I really do. Yeah, like I thought him. he did a great job, a really good job. Yeah, he, he's really, really good and convincing. And you, you relate to this guy. You like him. He's very believable as this kind of just regular dude just trying to get ahead. Yeah. And um, I will say, Tessa Thompson. In the first scene, I was cringing really fucking hard with her. She's like this crazy art chick. You know, yeah. who's got this like, all these eccentricities and um it was just she was really weird but it it, it made me laugh because i was thinking because we've seen a few movies earlier this year where you were like is that the chick from annihilation didn't even come up one didn't <laughs> even think of it <laughs> this is the this is the time where you can say that <laughs> and i didn't even think of it yeah. didn't even come up once she had yeah. like crazy dyed hair and stuff and it didn't look so nerdy she uh she has these earrings that are constantly changing all these very bizarre earrings and you walked out of the theater when subtext she, <laughs> well she had the she had these earrings that were just dicks <laughs> from her ear when you left the theater house. <laughs> it was really fucking funny seeing the ad. But um, yeah, I like Steven Yoon. He's in this, who played Glenn from The Walking Dead. I liked him a lot. Army Hammer, who he I was knew. the CEO. I knew he was in this movie. And man, this is like, he's so fucking good in this. I like I usually do not like him he at all. He was the CEO. He's the CEO of the okay. slave company. Ah. And he is just the slimiest fucking dude. 
And when you first see him, when when he's got his book and they're saying, you know, this is slavery, he's like, well, we don't really think of it like that. You know, he's just got yeah. that. He's got that. You know, he can sort of sell that. Right. You know, he's that guy who I can I can talk my way out of a paper bag. Yeah, like you remember that. Um, you remember that guy who was like raising the price of I don't know if it was like HIV. Martin Shkreli. In the HIV med, yeah. he, he had him on the phone. Yeah, yeah. He it, bought Wu Tang. He bought a Wu Tang album yes. to never release it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that scumbag, Martin Skrelly. Yeah, it, it, he reminded me of that. Obviously, that guy was not as charismatic. That guy looked like a fucking alien. Um, a bit of a dweeb. Yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, but uh, he. Army Hammer has that kind of sleazy businessman. Who can Plus, kind of he's sick. an actor whose job it is to look handsome and be yeah, charismatic. And smile at the camera yeah. and everything. And I, I really liked him in this. And I did also really like his best friend. Die Patch? I, no, 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 no. The oh, guy who was... He looked, he looked a little bit like Future mixed with... <laughs> Mixed with uh, the former point guard for the Bulls, Derek Rose. <laughs> Derek Rose, wow. Yeah, I could see a little Derek Rose. Yeah, I could see. see? Derek Rose. Derek... Finally, you're seeing yeah, on the Rudy see... Land side of life. I could see Derek Rose if Derek had Rose had a lot of hair. Yeah, didn't shave his head. He did for a minute when he was riding benches in Cleveland or something. Really? Huh. Um, this is the time where tremors are coming for us. <laughs> Graboids, as they're known in the universe. They don't want us talking about this movie. They're trying to silence us. It's just, we are, we're far (laughs) too, uh, you know, we're far too crazy and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I think the cast is great. Cinematography, I I just, I I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I definitely do have problems. We'll get into the I hated Tessa Thompson. Yeah, she... I fucking hated it. Didn't hate her, but she was detrimental to every scene she was in. It yeah. didn't take me out of every scene, but she was bad in every part that she was in. I thought she was okay in the scenes where she was spinning the sign. I liked those scenes. I thought they were funny, and I enjoyed them. Well, yeah, that was the point. You're yeah. supposed to get to know her. Hey, I'm just a cool girl spinning my sign. Yeah. It worked. But, yeah, that was uh, fine. Anything in the art exhibit, especially... It's about Africa, because Africa is big. It's about exploitation. Yeah. Capitalism is just the birth of when they started taking Africans and exploiting them. Yeah. Bitch, know what the fuck you're talking about? Yeah. Capitalism is... Pardon me, I'm sorry. Well, that's the thing, is that I think there's some people who literally just start talking out of their ass in the movie, and I don't think this I don't is know. supposed to be this profound That's person. what I think, too. I think they're playing it like that, because... She talks like she knows what she's talking about. Right. She's this big, smart intellectual, whatever. I'm, I hate labeling people, but yeah. when they go to her art gallery, she's doing the same white voice thing that he is. Yes. And she always chastises him for it, yeah. too. Yeah, and, and that's in the background. You only hear her do that voice in the complete background when she's trying to, like he says to her, just sell, sell your art to rich people. And you're yeah. fucking, you're chastising me. When that's what you want to fucking do. And that is what um, you do. Right. Yeah. So. I think I, it works a little bit better for me like that. Sort of um, as a don't listen to. She's not sort of the springboard of the movie. She's a sort of a parody of the society. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Well, she's sort of who are, a satire of people who are like that. Who think that they know everything. Who say that they're the moral ones when they're really hypocrites as well. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely agree with you. I think she is easily the weakest of, of the actors to me. I what think was the limited. point? I thought we'll, we'll save this for spoilers. The yes. Asian guy was okay for the most like part. Steve. He didn't, um, he didn't I would, didn't dislike him or didn't hate him. The um, friend I really miss. liked him. I thought he, he was miss. I thought, he, I thought he had a lot of the, the really funny moments. I thought his comedic yeah. timing with um, Lakia Stanfield was really fantastic. There's a scene where they're fighting because um, do you think that was improvised? Yes, I do. And I really love that. When Lakeith gets a promotion. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good week. Well, I hope you have a good month full of good days. Well, I hope you have a good year. <laughs> and it just goes like that. And it just further. keeps going on. He says, you know what? You smell good. He's like, yeah, yeah, you smell good, too. What you wearing? What you wearing? Oh, I got some blueberry, you know. Burberry? <laughs> Burberry going on. He's like, it's just deodorant. I, I, I like just got that. deodorant and all. <laughs> and, Dan, and I wish, I will say... I wish Danny Glover was in this movie more. He's only in it for a few scenes, and well, I he really served his purpose. He explained yeah. the game. The old timer explaining the game. He's the one who teaches Lakeith to do the white voice. What was the name of Lakeith in the movie? 
uh, Cassius. Ca- Cassius Green. Cassius. Cassius Green. And uh, not very subtle guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which it does it is a cool sounding name. Um, the one problem I have with this movie is its whole message is this guy's working hard, doing his thing, making money, but because he's not back, because he's not sort of like supporting his friends or his, his fellow co-workers, he's a bad guy. Well, it's... It, he's got to do his thing, man. It's, it's, like, he's not responsible for you or me. Right. Just like I'm not responsible for him or you. Right, yeah. It's it's talking about unions. Stephen Yoon's character wants to make a union. I, my friend, uh, am I, my friends, am a part of a union. And let me just say, they have done nothing for me. And in <laughs> fact, my job has been guaranteed to be deleted within two years. So... <laughs> Thanks, unions. Yeah. yeah. I don't have health insurance, FYI. But yeah, let's praise those unions. Yeah. Capitalism is good. I realize it's yeah. not perfect, but what's I, the alternative? I wouldn't go so far. I mean, yes, yes, you're right. There, there is a bashing of capitalism. It may have been, I may be overreaching. It may have just been it, I don't think it's specifically a, corp, big, gigantic corporations. Yeah, I, I think it may have been more focused on that, I don't but I could th- be wrong. I don't think it's as cynical as maybe you think it is. Yeah. Um, I definitely think it is going after giant corporations. For sure. The Fortune to, 500 the, At companies. the very least, yes. Um, you know, Not to say that I hate my country or am <laughs> in support of communist China, but I'm just saying no, we do yes. bad stuff, they do bad stuff. It's like... I was thinking about this. We talked about, I don't know, I think the Israeli thing one time, or I talked about it somewhere. Probably when we were talking about Beirut. Beirut, that's right. <laughs> Beirut, Israel's done bad stuff. Palestine's bad, done bad stuff. There's no clean hands in anything, man. They're, no, there's the bloodshed all over. Skeletons in all the closets. Yeah, it's uh, horrific. But let's uh, let's feature back to the <laughs> film. Forrest Whitaker appears in it. I'm going to save wanna what role he is. Go into recommendations and then go into the spoiler section. I wouldn't recommend it. Other than that, it's an interesting little movie. Rent it. Yeah, I will say that I did enjoy it, but this is not an easy pill to swallow. Um, it I was think, still. It wasn't as weird as you keep you. You said it to me a couple times, so I'm like, all right, it's I gonna think, be fucking nuts. I think you your perception of weird is very. Well, I mean, I was thinking. People, I was thinking insane. story. I was thinking maybe they're gonna play with. The way the story, the way the plot progresses, you, you know, know like the editing, like I, I mean, like uh, I think they're definitely playing with the story, not playing with story. I mean, like playing with the structure of the plot, like fucking around with film itself. Oh, Would you so say narrative wise, this is a pretty you mean, like kind of what Tarantino film. does with moving things around, like not in Maybe, sequence, not that, but not exactly. You know, just something. I don't know. I'm talking. I'm. A little bit tired. I'm talking a little bit out of my ass. <laughs> I apologize. All right, it happens. So uh, you're not recommending it. Um, I'd say rent it if you have an inkling. I, I'll definitely say that if you like weird movies, uh, if you like experimental film, and you're open to that, <laughs> if if you're open to experimental films, I you know I check it out in the theater. You know, like I said, support original filmmaking and independent filmmaking. You know, it's 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 pretty amazing that this was actually shown in the theater. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. I was surprised because I didn't recognize anyone in it. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I, except I, Danny Glover, I do recognize the lead because I've seen him in a few things. He's kind of an up and comer, and, and Tessa Thompson, she's kind of people know her from Creed and stuff. But uh, yeah, I I definitely lean with um, with uh, this is probably a better off like a rental for most people, but. You know, if, if, if you like to go to the theater, you know, and see experimental If films, you were talking to yourself, would you recommend it to go see it in a theater? Me? Yeah. Would I recommend would you recommend? No, would you recommend to yourself to pay and see this? If it didn't have movie pass. Sure. Even if, and then if I, you did. I, I don't think I would have saw this if I didn't have movie pass. All right, if you did, you you definitely would have. Would have. I would have definitely seen this movie. With movie pass. With movie pass, and I definitely would have seen this movie, like, once it came to rent. Like, yeah. I definitely would have saw it. Okay. But, you know, like, like I said, we paid, like, you know, we didn't pay. But, no. like I said, if, you, if you're open to the experimental films, you know, I'd recommend At least something interesting, because there's yeah. nothing really interesting out now, is yeah, there? I mean, and, Hereditary's still I mean, playing, but... Yeah, I mean, and listen, this is this is something that you can actually have a conversation about. I mean, the shit we've seen is just nothing. You're just 
it's just there's nothing to talk about. It's it's just we're talking about socialism versus capitalism and stuff. <laughs> at least, like, at the like, very least, this movie will have yeah. you thinking about stuff. Listen, if if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. But it's a real film. A lot of the shit out there is not even a fucking real movie. It's like a, a fucking TV commercial. Before we head into spoiler section, yeah. I'd like to say for those disappointed fans, my number one not seen this year movie. Movie, but reviewed on Rudy Land's movie talking podcast was 2017's <laughs> Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I didn't see it till 2018, so eat shit, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's spoilers, it. but continue. <laughs> spoilers. Uh, yeah, so, um, spoilers. Um, <laughs> Army Hammer is making genetic horse people. <laughs> yeah. That did kind of come out of nowhere. I laughed when I first saw Horseman I, writhing on the floor. I did not. I was I'm like, pretty sure everyone else was fuck. like disgusted and like what the hell is going on? Well, the thing is is that the scene basically lakia has got to take a piss. He's in this mansion. He's about to get this big proposition to get this yeah, crazy it, big it, job. He's already making tons of cash, yeah. but now he's going to be the t- he was the top 10%, now he's going to be the top 1%. Yeah, and it's funny you brought up Eyes Wide Shut, because there's a straight-up Eyes Wide Shut scene Rip off, where he's yeah. just I was sitting gonna in a chair you, and everyone's fucking, and I was, was like, Eyes um, Wide Shut immediately. Yeah, we both chuckled. Yeah. Was there a, um, were there any other scenes that reminded you of other movies? Because that was like yes. a dead ringer, man. Yeah, like I said, uh, the, the They Live brought up the Eyes Wide Shot. And there was one other thing. I didn't get They Live, out. but I can see it now from the From the post, the, the posters billboards, and billboards. Big time, I did. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, so he he's got to take a piss, and Army Hammer's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And he's like, go to the Olive Door and take a piss. And he's got all no, these, go to the Jade Door. The Jade Door, yes. All of the doors are all green, different shades of green. This guy's very eccentric and crazy. And uh, they bring up something at the beginning of the film, which ties into this, when Lakia's talking about different companies to Danny Glover. And he's saying, and it's it's not like apples and oranges. Mm. And Danny Glover says it's like apples and the Holocaust. It's like comparing apples and the Holocaust. Yeah. And when um, Lakiath is in that boardroom, uh, not that board, but in the office with Army Hammer, he has a green apple in his hand. Oh yeah. And then when he walks in to that room, it showers, like the Holocaust. Did yeah. Did you catch that? Yeah, I did. I was like. That's weird that you say that, because we walked in, I'm like, wait, what is he walking into a genocide room? That, when I first saw it, I was like, holy shit, are they fucking it really, killing people? It really does remind you of sort of um, that Anne Frank oh, yeah. holocausty shower. It's... Holocausty shower. Hashtag holocausty shower. <laughs> That's the thing, is that all of a sudden I was like, holy shit, is this movie going to turn into like a horror movie? That's all what I sudden, thought, I like, but then fuck. all of a sudden there's a horseman writhing on the floor and he neighs. As soon as he <laughs> neighs, dick. I lost it. Yeah, the giant horse dick flopping around <laughs> He's to like, and fro. And it, <laughs> like, the, the rubber latex like, makeup I is creepy know. as fuck. Sometimes it looked really good. Sometimes yeah. it looked really, really bad for me. Yeah, I will I will say it didn't look amazing, and I don't I don't think this was a high-budget movie. Even I didn't it expect good. it to look crazy good, but at some points, I don't know if the lighting, it, yeah, it looked really creepy, and it looked pretty good. And yeah. then other points, it was like... Yeah, like when the outside It was like Tim and Eric up. or something. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I think... It's trying to have a comic, uh, a bit vibe with the very bright colors. The, like all that, the so. voices, except for Force Whitaker, the Horseman, were um, comics. I think. Yeah, uh, Pat Oswalt plays was, uh, the the eye patch eye guy, patch man, and David Cross was uh, Lakeith. Were there and any other black guy? The uh, white lady voice that the girlfriend Tessa Thompson gave was an English accent. I didn't recognize yeah, I, it. I didn't catch it, but uh, I will say that didn't work for me the white voice thing it i found it very off-putting in some and then i wasn't like offended it's i don't think this is a mean-spirited movie towards i white thought people. when i, I every time no 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 it's i mean i did think it was a little odd that there was no white person in their group of rich oh, workers who were poor but whatever but there's a lot of white people who are working yeah it's not like it was thing. a whiteless no, movie not, and even if it was a yeah. whiteless movie who cares? They made it. If they didn't want any white actors in yeah. it, they didn't want nah, any white actors. I, I definitely, I just don't want people to think that this is a movie that bashing white people. But that is that that really fucking just knocked me for a fucking loop. Where I was like, the horse man, holy shit! And and I will say that I think that when pe- if pe- when people do see this, that could cause walkouts. I definitely could see people. 
Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of, yeah, gonna be a lot of people who, as soon as they see that, they're like, "What the yeah. fuck is this?" And yeah, just leave. and I don't know if I I said this before we got into. It might be at a time where it's late enough where most people are. It's like, all right, I've already been here for an hour and ten minutes. Yeah. I might as well ride it out. Yeah, I uh, I, I I should say this because I didn't say it before recommendations, but the people behind us. As soon as the movie ended, they were just like, that was the worst movie I've ever seen. I, I was wondering and I was what like, they said. I couldn't hear what they said. I was, and, and I wanted to say, like, seriously, dude, well, do you think you that's know, the worst movie you've ever seen? You gotta understand, you man. idiot. I was, were you at a point where, like, something where you had to really critically think about it was just automatically, I don't get it, that's fucking dumb. For me, that was definitely, t- until I was, like, probably 18, 19, I would see... When you're young, yeah, you're saying, you know, this is stupid. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't I even think that. about movies in a critical way until I saw a movie I didn't really understand. So I didn't saw. get it. <laughs> Do you know what movie it was? Uh, I'm guessing 2001. 2001 A Space Odyssey. I was like 18, 19, 20, 21 maybe. Mm-hmm. I knew I didn't like it because I didn't know what was going on, but I knew there was something about it. I wanted mm-hmm. to know what was happening. So You mean uh, towards towards the end? No, the whole movie. Like, Oh, wow. What? No, I mean like thinking critically oh. about all the aspects like yeah. why is why are we starting with ape men what does that have to do with anything right. what are we doing here in space now it all which that that it's yeah that ties in sort of essentially for movies for any sort of art literature or anything you got to see the forest through the trees and you got to see the trees yeah. inside the forest you got to think about everything you know yeah, and, and this is uh this is one of those movies where you, there's a lot in it to look at and you brought up 2001 there's a scene in the movie which is all claymation that they're watching on the tv the video yeah that's uh yeah. and it has that very 2001 kind of almost beginning where you got the kind of eight people and yeah the rock and yeah, everything. yeah yeah he so, bashes his head yeah, the rock yeah and that was that was really cool i liked that uh because it was real claymation it wasn't yeah. some cg bullshit and uh i gotta give credit to the writer director who's who's a rapper i've never heard of boots riley um He's big with the indie set. I guess so, but you know he he cares about practical effects. He you know he cares about just the matric uh, matriculous things to put into a movie. And uh, you know I, I definitely want to see the next movie he does. There was really do. there was one one more thing I should have mentioned earlier before recommendations since you mentioned it. Tom, um, there was a lot of jokes and a lot of bits where I thought they went on for too long. They didn't hit, and then they just kept going. Like, do you remember uh, the key code thing in the elevator? Yeah. It, I laughed. I'm like, hi. Because I'm like, it can't keep going after this. Yes. Come on. And then... It's, um... Beep, 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 boop, beep, 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 yeah, that, that's another thing. That, that reminded me of almost RoboCop, where... It was way over the top, where silly. they're shooting someone, yeah. and it keeps happening, and you're like, okay... This is funny. And then it keeps going. They keep shooting someone. And they're like, oh, this is disturbing. And then Ed Toon and I keep shooting somebody. And they're like, and oh, no, this is funny, funny again. <laughs> I didn't see it. Most of them, I didn't come back. It didn't bring me yeah, back well, on this fourth try or I, whatever. I, I agree with you. I think the, the, the button thing goes on too long. But I think they are doing that kind of RoboCop type of thing. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, we're doing this. This isn't funny. Now it is funny. Okay, now this is kind of fucking ridiculous. <laughs> and then let's go for another <laughs> round. Just, hey, yeah, boy, you know, we're really secure here. You know? The um, lady in the elevator reminded me, whenever she spoke, I thought she was a discount Catherine Hahn. Oddly enough, she comes up again. From, uh, from Hotel Transylvania 3? Yes. Can you I, picture, I her, picture face? her face? No, she was in uh, Step Brothers. Oh. She was uh, his, Will Ferrell's brother's wife. Yeah, whatever. Look it up later. I'd like to rewatch that movie. I thought she was a um, discount her. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of her. But she she was only in the movie for 10 minutes. But I will say another standout who's a side character was his boss with all the face tats. Well, it wasn't his boss, but it was the manager on the floor. Yeah, he was good. I loved him. Like, you walked out of the theater during the sequence where they're, like, high-fiving. Like constantly. I thought it was just going to be the montage of that, so I'm like, all right, I can go <laughs> take the They're jumping piss. in the air after each call that they make, and, and it was just, it was fucking hilarious. I liked I his really anarchy tattoo when he's like, oh, on the side of his neck. follow the rules, stick to the script or something, and then he turns, yeah. anarchy. Well, that brings up another bit, because he, um, <laughs> you were talking about bits that go on for a long time. When they're having the seminar, 
and they're talking about sticking to the script. That guy just grabbed a um, yeah. fast food bag off the ground, and he's now going to depart and eat yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the great gem of where I live. <laughs> anyway, uh, but there's a bit when they're doing the uh, the fucking uh, seminar <laughs> for all <laughs> the appointments where he signed about, you got to bag them, you got to tag them. Yes. You got to take this body. You got to drag it out there. And Didn't do it for it. me. Oh, I thought you laughed at that theater. I'm there was one, the, the first, uh, I think the first bag part I did, and then he lost me on <laughs> I, I really liked that scene where he's talking about taking the toe tag and everything. And that was really funny. I remember um, after the first one when I laughed, it was... Out. um. He wasn't eating it. It was too... He doesn't like pickles. There was pickles <laughs> on that one. It, um, I could see He's where it was going. Friendly. We're talking about body bags. All right, now we're talking about tags. Body oh, bags, I just wonder if we're going to talk tags. about corpses now and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I just could I f- could digraph where it was going. I don't think that's what the word I meant to say, but yeah. nevertheless, I said it. What's the hashtag I gave out earlier? I was just about to shout it out. <laughs> Something gross and grotesque. Horse dicks. Hashtag, <laughs> Hashtag horse Rudy cock. Lands horse cock. That, 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 that reminds me of another scene where he, he snorts <laughs> that, oh, yeah. uh, that coke on the horse plate. Mr. Bogo or whatever. And then I love when he goes to um, <laughs> he goes to his girlfriend. He's just, he's got his fucking well, the doctor. He goes to the doctor. He's like, does it look bigger? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so that one was good. It's ridiculous. Game there. She's just kind of like, yeah. She's like, no. no looks good. Like, looks, looks the same. Nonetheless, <laughs> he does turn into a horseman at the end. Yeah, that was crazy. That Why was did he turn into a horseman? What was? What do you think they are saying there? Why did he? Oh, well, he was drugged by the guy. Yeah, but why at that? Never mind. Forget I forget. Tired mind. He was minds. drugged, and they said. Yeah, that. I know that it happened. I understand why <laughs> no, he I'm became a horseman. He wanted him to be the Martin Luther King of the horse people. <laughs> that was funny. See, I thought the Asian guy was going to end up being that. I thought that was going to be the turn at the end. He was going to be evil. Yeah. I thought Stephen Yoon. He it was going to turn out that he was, yeah. like, because that's exactly what uh, Armin Hammer, Armin Army, Hammer, Army Hammer, Army Hammer. Yeah. That's exactly what he said. We're going to put you in. You're going to pretend like you speak for them. You're on their side. And You're gonna work what for the us. fuck happened to Stephen Yu? He's just sitting there by the coffee machine. Hey, I like your style. You can really make things happen, man. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, he But it didn't happen. Five years, a hundred million bucks. You just gotta be a horseman. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh. He reveals the horse footage to the world, and the world says, yeah. great science. <laughs> and the stock soars to the roof and everything, which, you know, hey, I mean, shit like that does happen. Yeah, yeah, but I think I it may mean, have it, been a little... It, oh, yeah, it was over the top. Yeah, I mean, if we, we knew that people were turning people into fucking horses. I'm pretty sure the world would... Uh, Not be down with that. Yeah. I mean, unless equine sapiens. That's what they're called. Equine sapien or whatever. Equine sapien. I yeah. thought that was funny. Yeah, I'm sure. Something else reminded me of a movie. I can't... I, I had it and I lost it. Oh, well. Bojack Horseman? No, no, not Bojack Horseman, but not that It's pretty <laughs> close, though, right? I've never seen an episode of it. It's um, like many comedies. Stop trying to interject depressing storylines and shit. You're a comedy. I come to you to laugh. Yeah. Speaking of which, a huge recommendation. I just rewatched the first and most of the second season. The best show you probably never watched, Nathan For You. By far the funniest show I've seen in years. Mm-hmm. By far. Really? Not Hulu? Yes. Check it out. Definitely, if you haven't seen it, see it. It's Nathan for you is from I believe the late aughts. He's um. Do you remember those shows where a business tycoon would come in and help failing businesses, whether restaurant or okay, any yeah. other? Well, he does that, but in ludicrous fashion. Oh. So one is he um. There's a rebate for gas. So he sets the prices to the lowest in the country. But in order to get the rebate, you have to time, climb to the top of a mountain. So you lose 90% of the people there. Then you have to solve riddles with Nathan. Then you lose most of the other people. Then it just goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I'm not doing it justice. Watch yeah, Nathan for you. Weird. It was incredibly, it's incredibly funny. 
It's a real BBC world. BBC kind of a. No, it was on Comedy thing? Central. Four oh, seasons. Oh, wow, really? Wow. Yeah. Came out the same that. time as another show by another comedian, but. Who's uh, the main guy? In it? Nathan Fielder. Nathan Fielder. Do you, uh, did, do you, if you guys remember Dumb Starbucks, it was uh, where they legally were able to copy all of Starbucks, you know, stuff uh -huh. because he set precedent as himself as a parody artist. Mm. And Dumb Starbucks is a parody. Yeah, I'll have to put it in the queue there. That episode, he does an entire episode talking about that. It's pretty... So is that kind of like The Office where it's a docudrama? Kind of it's thing real. Goes? It's sort of, it's the documentary style, but it's oh, sort so, of so embellished elements. He's talking to the camera and there's camera people following him kind of thing. Yeah, there's real people involved. That's what makes it funny. Oh, so it's kind of Sasha Baron Cohen kind of exactly. thing. Exactly, exactly. Oh, okay. right. I see what you're saying. Very good. Very funny. And one of the, I don't say this lightly. I have a very low shit meter for humor. <laughs> this shit is fucking hilarious. It's it, funny, huh? I watched it a while ago. I forgot about it. I rewatched it. Fucking hilarious. Three or four seasons, maybe more. Wow. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Um, Even though we're not in recommendation section, let's get back to uh, We Were Never Really well, you Bother wanna... You. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. You want to just give me our final ratings? Anything else you want to get into about it? Or... Um, nothing's really coming to mind. It's know? it's definitely the story has weird elements for yeah. sure, but the story itself, the narrative itself, plays out in a relatively uniform fashion. Yeah, I mean it's in it's in sequential order. You know, it's not like flipping I mean I'm talking like movie structure, like yeah. the rise, then the fall here, then the rise back up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I will say there was one thing I did want to bring up before we give ratings is that he has this picture of this Hispanic his dad. Guy. I think is it? Geez, I thought it was his dad. Yeah, it's like a Hispanic guy, and every time we see the picture, it's different. It's, it's in like a different position. It's based. He's, it's no. It's like his how he feels about himself. How he, it's how he reflects moment, about himself because it's his how his dad feels about him. So it's because since moment. his dad's not there, his dad's gone. It's right. actually you know. How he feels yeah. about himself, you know yeah, what I mean? Was, that was interesting. Like that's such a, well, you know, I, I mean, we we always talk about you know people who don't have vision, and regardless if you like the movie, you can't say the director didn't have. It was an interesting idea of at the very least, like Hereditary. Yeah. Even though you disagree, it may not have been right. good, but at the very least, it's interesting. Yeah, I definitely won't say Hereditary was bad, but yeah, no. I uh, I can cue the audio. I'm gonna yeah. skewer you so bad <laughs> if I remember. Yeah, what's I your recommend? What's your what's your final rating? My final rating. Uh, I will say, as I was watching this, I was like, "Wow, I think this might be a seven. I was enjoying it. And really then it slowly lot. fell. Then it. I will say, the third act, it did bump it down for me. So just because it went on. To, was the third act not good enough, or was it just went on too long? Uh, you know, I wasn't a hundred percent with the horse people thing. You know, that really did throw me for a loop. Uh, and I it, was right on board. I was like, "All right, yeah, that they're making was, worse people." I was like, "Yeah, I don't know if I'm really down with this." Like, I get, I like the instructional video. It's really funny to me when you see kind of the horse people and they're picking up the packages and everything. And I was like, "Oh, I, okay, I like that." But just the imagery was so horrific to me. I was like, it was found very stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very disturbing. The body. One of them roared. Thing. One of them roared at one at point. End, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Was, uh, but yeah, I give this a six. Uh, I enjoyed it. I could see myself rewatching it later in time, uh, revisiting it. And like there's I say, definitely a lot more to be learned. Yeah, it's 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 definitely one that uh, there's like it's a movie that you know it'll be interesting to hear what other people think and kind of talk about and have discussions about because there's there's a lot going on in the movie. Hey, in my comment section, it's not a ghost <laughs> town. There's tons of people talking movies Everyone's there. Everyone's going to be talking about Sorry to Bother You. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd, I'd go six out of ten. Um, it's interesting. I was bored throughout, though. We'll give it a six. Oh, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you, are you sure you don't, I don't want you regretting it. Don't let yeah, me push I, you. Sick. I told you, there's some interesting things in here, but yeah. it's... I don't know. The rest of it felt like hipster trash, man. Yeah, like I said earlier, many of the jokes completely fell for me. For me, they just were dehumanizing. I forgot to mention, a lot of this movie is sort of how work is de de 
dehumanizing. These corporations are dehumanizing. Ah, now I remember. I was thinking of Office Space and uh, Idiocracy, Mike Judge's, uh, two of Mike Judge's movies. Especially Which specifically. Idi- um, well, well, the cubicle thing, kind of just being there and soul-sucking work and all that, that imagery. The cubicle where the black guy with the eye patch invited him some party felt really creepy to me. Yeah, it... It's uh, So I got off of space vibes from that. And also the Idiocracy thing uh, really reminded me of the Idiocracy because there's a game show in the world of called... You go get the shit slapped out of you or something. Get, get the shit kicked out of you. And Danny Glover has the shirt of it. It's like, I love this shit. It makes me feel good. And I watch it at the bar. And that, that really reminded me of uh, uh, Idiocracy and kind of talking about you know reality television and just kind of the... The brain dead nature of you know a lot of that shit. What was the name of the uh, corporation? Slave corporation. Uh, yeah, I was. I asked you earlier. I can't really remember it. Uh, it pisses me off. Anyways, there was uh, cribs, but it was for the slaves. Yes, that was funny. That scene. Was, that was pretty good. Where the guy goes to like, grab some of the food out of the lady. That <laughs> helped you think of Robocop kinda, at all. Uh, more Starship Troopers yeah. with uh, the, the kind of join now kind of weird thing. And like I said, Idiocracy with kind of that weird shit. But the, the RoboCop more so with the with the button thing. And, uh, what is that? Vic, uh, Victory Live from Mipsy Hustle. It's his, he's, he's, uh, he's made a lot of mixtapes. This is his first album that he's put out. And it's just if you love West Coast rap, good fucking beats. The album is really good. There's eight tracks on it that I like fucking love. Um, and the other one I recommend, the newer album just came out, uh, J Rock's Redemption. Really good. I think he's on the same label as J Cole. J Rock, like from Trailer J-Rock. Park Boys. No. No. J Rock. I mean, I feel like he. After that, I would have picked a different name, but that's just me. Yeah, I don't. I don't think any black people know what Trailer Park Boys is. Most Americans <laughs> probably don't. <laughs> Uh, but most Canadians. Canadians, no, I was about to say most Canadians <laughs> probably don't. Oh uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, those are the two uh, current albums this year that I would say. Here are my good. current rap album recommendations. That's of the Wu Tang. Here is number one. <laughs> number one. I want to get this just right. I just downloaded this track recently. Okay, oh, really? it's right. a brand new, smoking hot track. You're never gonna hear anywhere else because some Cardi B on us, huh? <laughs> Is she good or no, she's trash. She's fucking trash. Alright. Number one. We're gonna go with Charlie Poole in the North Carolina Ramblers if the river was whiskey. <laughs> Not new at all, but super fucking old. In your face, Rudy Land. Number two. Hi, my name is, because that's the first thing I thought of. Nah, fuck that. Jurassic Harlem. I can't remember the guy who sings it right now, but he won Freestyle Fridays. <laughs> Love the beat. If you've never heard Jurassic Harlem, hit up fucking YouTube right now and watch one of my videos instead. Rudy Land. <laughs> That was bad. I was going to try to do a rap beatbox. Didn't work out. Sorry, gang. 